friends uncle marv here with a very special weird edition of the it business podcast if you are watching this video live you'll understand why if you are watching after the fact well you missed the whole start up to this tonight i am not broadcasting live on any of the social medias i am streaming only from the Streamyard platform and it's a little bit of a test so I'll explain a little bit about that later, but tonight I have no guest. I have no topic. I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants like I have done so many times before. So if you join here, uh, feel free to throw a question in the chat and I will answer. You can throw a comment in the chat and I might respond. If you have a topic that you'd like me to pontificate about, you can throw that in there as well. But I should say, if you got to this live, you noticed that you had to actually sign up and register. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to see how many people would do it because basically uh, I know that our community people are a little leery and not sure about signing up for stuff. I have always maintain the fact that I do not obviously collect your list. I don't sell your names. I really don't have a newsletter. I have a email that I have been sending out to my patrons, those that are supporting me on a monthly basis on patreon.com. I actually have what I call an unofficial board of directors. Those are friends of mine in the industry that give me advice about the podcast. They are real in giving me their responses about what I am doing. And I've got some of those that I will send a unofficial newsletter to. I'm hoping to start building up this email list and have it be something where as listeners and participants in the show, I can email things that are not necessarily podcast related, but are, uh, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way but are related in some way where I might be doing some behind the scenes things, maybe on Patreon. Uh, anytime we do things that we have talked about doing in the past, like the IT business book club or a private peer group, those sort of things. So this is kind of one of those experiments. I wanted to see how many people would actually do this. And I see that a couple of people have jumped on. Uh, Giles, a little confused at first, but figured it out. I knew that you would. Uh, John Reed, what is going on? Well, John, you missed the very beginning, but you can go back in here. This is me doing a little bit of a test. I am not streaming on the social medias. I'm streaming only to this platform because there may come a time in the future where we only do these types of events, kind of like a go-to meeting or a Zoom webinar where people will need to register. One of those things that we are working on is a three-day lunch and learn or something to that effect. It'll be a three-day three uh, Net Ally uh, series. And this is because Net Ally is the main sponsor of the show. We want to do something where one, we can get a little more deeper into the Net Ally products and have it not fill up podcast space, but also do something where we can provide an environment that would be like this, not live, uh, where people that register, they don't have to attend all three days, but they can attend the sessions that they want. And we can get, you know, really down and dirty with the Net Ally products. I also want to work with Net Ally and giving away uh, something as part of the session. 
And the only way to do that really is to collect names and email addresses. So I wanted to see how this worked. So that was something that I wanted to try and know what better way to try it than to spring it upon you and see how many people would actually follow through. I wanted to see how easy it was to set this up, have people go to the site, give the name and address, and then of course, be able to see this live. I will be editing this. Yeah, I know, I don't edit, but this is how I'm gonna do it. At the very beginning, I played music, which I cannot do on the social medias without getting flagged. Uh, so we may be doing stuff in the future where we have a little bit of a, uh, like a, a little uh, reception type deal where we'll be playing music. We can banter back and forth. Uh, maybe an after show where we can talk about things and I can chop off the beginning and the end of the official podcast and throw that up on YouTube that will be paired with the podcast. So that's where we are with the show. And if you want to, of course, you know, give me suggestions and comments, you can do that in the chat and respond. But that's where we are. So I did not have a topic or a guest for tonight. This is this is that middle of the section where I told you guys that I had a bunch of projects. I have done phase one and two of a three phase project for my largest client, the one where we are doing the multiple Hyper-V servers. Uh, I did phase one where we did their Tampa office conversion. That was a domain office that was connected by VPN back to their main office in Royal Palm. We converted uh, 34 workstations from domain stations to remote only. They had a total of 51 people between uh, the Tampa office, the St. Pete office, and people that were working remotely. We moved the remote servers that were in that Tampa office over to Royal Palm. We actually put in new servers there. I did a single physical server and did two Hyper-Vs. <laughs> Ah, uh, you can run, but you can't hide. Um, we also did um, a network uh, change out with some stuff in the West Palm office. I put in 10 gig uh, partial switches. They're not fully 10 gig switches. I did an eight port 10 gig and then a multi gig where they've got, I think it's 16 of the 48 ports are 2.5 gig uh, to give them more, some more bandwidth there. And that's going to get them ready for the 10G upgrade that hopefully will happen in the next five years or so. I still have phase three to do, which is another few servers. We've got a domain controller. We've got to upgrade from 2012 to 2022. We have two servers that they are doing. One is a SharePoint server that they are still trying to run from the small business server days. We did convert it from the small business server to a standalone SharePoint. Uh, the free SharePoint uh, version that that's running on. We also have a database program called Syskit. It's an employee monitoring program for all of their remote users. That is also going to be running on SQL. So those are two servers that need to be migrated. So that is happening. And then we have another file server that I have to convert from an old HP file server and throw that onto the Synology NAS that we installed. We actually converted half of their files already. And we've got, I think it's another five terabytes to move from this server. And then we'll have everything on a Synology NAS and we will be using that and cover your ears, Kaseya, getting rid of two big bad boy Datto backup appliances. So we will be doing all of the backups from the Synology. The file stations will uh, be backed up with hyper, hyper backup inside of Syn uh, Synology. And then we will be doing active backup of their servers and then throwing them up to either Wasabi or the Synology C2 platform. We haven't decided which one yet. So that will be replacing the Dados for this client. They're the ones that have CJ on staff so cj is going to actually help with some networking stuff let's just say that's the plan i don't know if he actually will 
And uh, I ignored three emails from him today that started out with, please advise. And uh, I got a kick out of somebody we were on a call uh, two weeks ago that somebody had listened to the podcast and said that you really delete his emails. And I said, yes, I, I do. Uh, specifically the ones that start with, please advise. Or if that's all that says where he's forwarded an email and then he says, please advise. So I do do that. Uh, so those are the projects that I've got working on. I probably do have a question that I should ask somebody. I have not done much research on it yet. So I have another client that we did this past weekend, not, not the same client, but we uh, did a domain upgrade for them as well, put in a domain controller. We had a terminal server to upgrade for them as well. And we had a time and billing program, Time Matters, to move uh, it was a SharePoint server as well. Their terminal server uh, was also being upgraded from 2012 to, actually, we only upgraded that to 2019. But it was interesting because I ran into a problem, and this is the first time I've run into this, where the Microsoft 365 would not install on the new server. And we're running it in Hyper-V. So it is an interesting little thing that it, it just simply wouldn't install. I could download it. I can install it on any other server, any other machine in that office. But for some reason, the download executable, and it was either we tried both the, the 32 and the 64-bit, and literally nothing would happen. So I attempted to do a little research in the middle of the project, but then I realized I, I just don't have time to do that. So uh, it's just something where I, I'm going to have to at some point reach out to Microsoft, but I'll also mention it here on the community first. If anybody has run into the scenario where you've tried to run the M365 client and, uh, you know, and, and it's weird because, you know, they say you can download it and run it offline. Well, all they do is give you the executable. So it's not like it's not like you're running it any different even if you do it from the website it's going to download that setup that office setup.ehc and it's going to run anyway so if somebody knows a way to pull down the entire 365 file or uh and help me understand why it may not be running to begin with uh that would be appreciated and uh Let's see, I'm going to try something here because in StreamYard, you can actually reply to chat messages with icons. So, Giles, I see your comment there. I'm going to give you the thumbs up and uh, have a good night. So, that was my question there on the 365 install. Let's see, what else is going on here? Uh, oh, I broke Active Directory for a client. That was fun. I had a not-for-profit that we were doing a upgrade for them. And, you know, it's going to be one of those things where do as I say, not as I do. But, hey, back up everything. Back up everything. And luckily, I had a good enough backup that when I broke Active Directory, I just did a restore. But let me tell you how I broke it. So going from, I think that was a also a 2012 server, which was, I had just done that the weekend before, where I, you know, went through all the steps to, you know, prep the uh, domain, uh, transfer the SM, F, SMO roles, uh, set up DHCP on the new server, set up DNS on the new server, make sure everything was talking properly, started to have clients get their IP addresses from the new server, made sure that everything was working properly, uh, promoted the new server to the primary domain controller role, made sure that was working, went to go demote the old server, and it looked like everything was working fine. We did run into an issue where two of the roles 
did not transfer and we actually had to seize those. I've not had to seize in quite some time. So for those of you that may not be working with on-prem servers that much, when you do, I mean, it's got to be the same in the cloud as well. If you're upgrading to a new domain controller, you've got to transfer all of the roles. And whether you're just simply installing the Active Directory services inside of the server manager, you still have to, you know, move the FISMO roles. Uh, you still have to, you know, change the infrastructure. Hopefully, you're going to raise the forest uh, from 2012. It could be still 2008 if you didn't do that before, but you got to raise it up to 2016, which is the latest version it is, even though there is, you know, 2019 and 2022 servers, the 2016 force level is the highest it will go. So we did all that and did the demotion on the old server, thinking everything was fine, shut off the old server and went about my night, did all my stuff. And the next morning people couldn't log in. And it was the strangest thing. Don't know what happened, uh, except for the fact that basically people were getting the message that said could not find the domain controller for this domain. So try to do a few repairs, uh, tried to go into recovery mode and do that. Nothing worked. And I just, again, it was a small network. There were only six users. So I just punted and brought up the old server, did a restore got everything up and going, then did a second migration. And the second time worked. Don't know why that is, but that has been my joy for the past week, which is one reason why I don't really have a full topic for tonight. I had not planned on having a guest because I knew that I was going to be in this stretch. Speaking of this stretch, next Wednesday night, they're most likely... Well, no, there definitely will not be a show because next Wednesday, uh, if you are listening to this in real time, today is Wednesday, November 1st. Next Wednesday is the 8th, which is the day that I will be at IT Nation in Orlando. And I will be doing some interviews based on the ConnectWise Pitch It competition. And who knows what else is going on. So there will be no live show next Wednesday night. And then we come back and I've got a tentative show on Wednesday the 15th. And then Wednesday the 22nd is usually the day that we do the Black Friday preview. And I haven't made all the plans for that yet, but that's how our November is shaping so let us see here. All right. I see that we still have two people watching live. That's pretty good. I was expecting one. So we had three earlier. Somebody had to drop. Um, I do want to do this. So every now and then I talk about things that I've got saved up that I really want to talk about. And this, this is something where I'm going to give you Uncle Marv's commentary. And I know you're going to love it. So let me see if I can pull up this picture. I probably should have tested this. And this is going to be a little awkward because, of course, this is live and unscripted. So if you're listening by audio, just bear with me. I'm pulling up a picture. If I can figure out how to open it. Open with photos. And now let me see if I can present it on the screen. Let's share this screen. Let's do this. All right. So we'll make that a little bit bigger. So I'm going to read this. And this is something that it's been around for quite some time. And I don't think I've paid attention to it in the past. But over the last two or three years, I have seen this and it actually has started to bother me. And maybe because it's come up in different versions, but the basic premise is exactly what you see here on the screen if you're watching. If you are listening by audio, here's what it says. A bottle of water can be 50 cents at a supermarket, 
$2 at the gym, $3 at the movies, and $6 on a plane. Same water. Only thing that changed its value was the place. So the next time you feel your worth is nothing, maybe you're at the wrong place. So this is a, I don't, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's not a meme, even though people have turned it into memes. It's been on social media. It's been on Facebook and LinkedIn. And it's even been modified the last time that I saw it that I could not uh, remember where and I did not save it. Uh, they actually had brought up that, you know, the water, bottle of water at Disney was such and such. And I just kept thinking that it's kind of weird that we're talking about a bottle of water as a way to market and the way to place value on yourself when to be honest the value isn't in the water and this saying says that you know might you might be in the wrong place well the problem i have with that is this if we use that model to talk about our business, whether we're, you know, an IT service shop, a solo tech, a million dollar MSP, you know, knowing your place may ha not have anything to do with water at all. I mean, IT services, IT services here in Fort Lauderdale have a range of values that are acceptable to Fort Lauderdale, New York City has a range of values that is acceptable for New York City's Los Angeles, California, Raleigh, North Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah. And yes, I'm purposely not mentioning cities of people that I know. Because <laughs> listen, I don't want to offend anybody here, but I, I think that if you're using this, as a way to say that, you know, I'm going to raise my rates because I'm going to try to change the value based on this saying, I, I think you're looking at it from a wrong perspective. Yeah. Listen, I'm not, I'm not a great marketer. You all know me as no marketing Marv, but the real honest truth is, you know, that I do some marketing. You know that I am all about brand awareness. You know that I am all about presenting yourself in a particular way. You know that I'm all about customer experience. Customer experience matters. And I think what upset me about the last time I saw this, and not, and it wasn't this picture, it was definitely the one about Disney World. And I thought, you know, Marketing a bottle of water at Disney World has nothing to do about the water, but it has to do with Disney World. It has to do with the experience at Disney World. Because here's the thing. I wish I had a bottle of water. See, I didn't even plan ahead. Water can be water, no matter where you get it from. And if you were somebody who just finished a hike up and down a mountain and you need a bottle of water, because you are famished and parched and sweating and dehydrated. Yeah, you're going to pay whatever for the bottle of water. But here's the difference. In using Disney as a reason to change the value of water, here's the way I see it. People aren't going to Disney for the water. People aren't flying Delta and American Airlines and Spirit or the water. That's just not the way it is. Now, they can charge differently based on convenience. They can charge simply based on the fact that where are you going to go when you're at those places? If you're on a plane, you're not getting off the plane to get water. So either you decide to get it or you don't. If you're at Disney, you're not leaving Disney for water. Now you might leave Disney to go eat, but you're also at Disney for the experience. So you may expect 
to pay more because of where you're at. So the value subjection is a little different. And I just, this whole idea of if you find that you don't value yourself, maybe you're in the wrong place. Here's where I also will attribute this to our industry. You know, the biggest thing we talk about is our stack. You know, what's your stack? How good is your stack? And we've got products that have just come out of the market now to actually show you how your stack ranks and where it may have gaps. But if we look at what we're selling simply based on the stack, then we have commoditized ourselves like that bottle of water. Now, yes, there are different brands of water. There's cheap water, there's expensive water, there's French water, there's bubbly water. And yes, you can have all of that. The same way that we as solution providers can have different stacks that are worth more and premium and not so premium and that sort of a thing. But we are not marketing that stack. We are marketing ourselves. We are marketing our company. We are marketing our solutions based off the experience that we can provide our customers. And if we are providing a better experience, if we are providing better uptime, if we are providing better peace of mind to our clients, well then that's where your value is. That's where you can raise your price. And you can say, look, we have to charge this to give you this. Because if not, then you can be any Joe on the street, any man in the van providing IT support. And if you want to go for the lowest price, then fine. The other issues that I have with this is that Customers are now able to see a lot of our pricing because some of our vendors are going direct and they see the pricing. Some of our vendors have pricing on the website. Some of our customers can go into places like Reddit and the Facebook groups and stuff and see us sharing prices with each other and corporate IT who are just railroading independent contractors and managed service providers because they say, well, you know, this is only $2 per endpoint. Why are they charging a hundred bucks? They're not calculating in the cost that it takes to have a office space and pay the technicians. You know, yes, I'm providing an endpoint that may, may be anywhere from, you know, five to $9 per endpoint, $20 if you're, you know, adding cybersecurity services, another 25 if you're adding Office 365, all these things. Yes, you can commoditize that, but what does it cost for the labor to provide that service? What does it cost for everything that surrounds that? The training, the time away at conferences, the onboarding and offboarding, all of those things play into the price. So, I mean, obviously I didn't prepare for this or I'd have more, but the bottom line I think I want to say is stop marketing yourself like a bottle of water. That's not what we are. Market yourself based on your customer experience. How are you making your customers feel and are they getting what they paid for what are their expectations? All of those things. That's how you can justify your price. So you may be sitting there thinking, well, Marv, what do you charge? And I'm not going to tell you. I've shared my stuff enough on here that people know um, I'm not the cheapest and I'm not the most expensive. And I go up against other service providers all the time that are bigger than me and charge less than me. Some of them provide great service, great value, and are fantastic. And I'll never, I'll never beat them at their game. Others 
are cheaper than me and provide crappy service. There's no other way around it. And I beat those clients. Or I beat those solution providers because I provide a better service than those people. My service isn't fantastic. It's not gold plus plus. It's good, decent service. It's fair. And um, that's how I charge. Now, I'm not able to charge two or $300 per endpoint or user, but we're working on it. But I'm also not charging 25, which is actually a rate that a managed service provider here in Fort Lauderdale will charge, not per endpoint and per user, or let me rephrase that. Because you've heard me charge, I charge one price for endpoints and I charge another price for users and I blend those together. So that's the way that I, I do mine. A lot of people will do either charging by the endpoint or charging by the user. And technically in Fort Lauderdale, that ranges from $75 to $400 for servers. So 75 to 400. So that's the range that we are in. There are solution providers here in Fort Lauderdale that will charge $35 per endpoint period. And that's their, that's their monthly service. So that's what I'm competing with here. So that's the bottle of water that I'm competing against. If we want to stay with the analogies, but, um, that's it. So I didn't mean to rant, but that's, uh, that's where I'm thinking. All right. Thank you all for hanging out here. Let me go ahead and do two things. So I do want to wrap up with some other stuff, but before I wrap up, let me give a shout out and thank you to our sponsors. You know that the IT business podcast is presented by net ally. They are the number one ally for network diagnostic tools in the industry. I, I pretty much use mine every day. So head over to netally.com and find out how you can be a better network technician with a NetAlly handheld tool. Our live show supporting sponsor is Computers Done Right, providing managed services in the Southwest Florida region, Venice, Florida. Not only do they do managed services, they provide computer repair, website services. They can even help you with social media. Anything you need done right, do it with computersdoneright.com. And our supporting sponsor, Instant House Call, for those of you needing remote support for your clients and you're not ready to go full board with an RMM PSA, Instant House Call may be for you. It provides all the same features as the big boys. You can even white label it and do unattended support. And you can try it free at instanthousecall.com for 15 days. And you don't even have to put in a credit card. So those are our supporters there. And I also, I don't do it all the time, but I should say thank you to my Patreon sponsors, people that are providing a little bit of a monthly support pledge and if you go to itbusinesspodcast.com click on the sponsor or support page it will take you uh, to all the different options that you have uh, as i mentioned you can actually donate is the name of the tab i changed it so itbusiness.com and click on donate and you can join the patron you can buy me a coffee or you can do a donation on PayPal. All of those are good. And of course, if you hit the sponsors tab, you will see all of the sponsors we have. The ones I mentioned at Ally, Computers Done Right, Instant House Call. I also have affiliate programs that I participate in with Synchro and Ovic. And then of course, StreamYard. If you are in need of a streaming solution and you like this one here, click on StreamYard now. So no, two bucks for that. And I should mention here on the monthly queue, if you actually did do the sign up here and get into the show, uh, I am entering you into 
the $100 Amazon gift card giveaway that I will be doing at this year's holiday show. So that is one thing I wanted to test, but I wanted to say thank you for doing this and showing up to my test of this live platform. So you'll be entered in. And yes, this will be cumulative. So if you already received a entry for doing the monthly queue, either last month or this month, uh, all Patreons automatically get an entry. And then if you sign up for this, you will get an entry. So you could have two or three entries this time around. So um, the other way that you can get that is to head over to the monthly queue, click that tab on the website. And I still have up the last question where it is a reference to episode 567, my tech audit for Hyper-V for RDP. How do you think I did with part one of my project, good or bad? What suggestions or comments do you have for me? So fill that out and uh, send me your thoughts and that will enter you into the giveaway for the $100 Amazon gift card. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, I mentioned already that I will be at IT Nation next week. I do have uh, one or two audio podcasts that will come out. So if you are somebody that is new to the show and you've just kind of been referred here, came across it by accident, sign up to receive notices in your podcatcher itbusinesspodcast.com slash follow. It will give you a whole list of all the places that you can hear the audio versions of the podcast. Of course, if you follow me on YouTube or the Facebook, you'll also get notifications there when we go live. Although I may be changing that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn and on Twitch. So that's it, folks. That's uh, my live unscripted show. If you are watching live, hang with me here through the outro. We'll do a post show, uh, something I want to be trying later as well. But if you are watching later, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back with another episode of the podcast soon. I'll be in touch after IT Nation. That's going to do it for this show. I don't have an outro here, so I'll just say so long, farewell. I'll feed her saying good night. And until next time, holla.